civilization is a heat engine. It has all these consequences. Abrupt climate change is one of them. It's clearly underway. Collapse of civilization has consequences too. Turning off the heat engine will have, interestingly enough, the effect of raising global average temperature between 1 and 3 degrees Celsius in a matter of days. Global dimming. There's a BBC documentary on the topic from 2005, I believe it is, so more than 10 years ago. In addition to greenhouse gases produced by industrial activity, there are also other particulates produced by industrial activity, most notably aerosols and sulfates, sulfates from low quality coal or high sulfur coal. So in addition to putting greenhouse gases that trap heat, like putting blankets on the bed when it's already a hot summer day, industrial activity produces particulates that reflect incoming sunlight. So we're only getting a fraction of the sunlight we would otherwise get were we not burning coal and oil. So we're producing an umbrella at the same time we're throwing the blankets on the bed. And as we learned on September 14th, 2001, three days after 9-11, just stopping the, the flying of United States planes produced a profound impact on global average temperature. We didn't stop burning coal. Nobody else stopped flying. But global average high temperatures increased by about a half a degree Celsius and low temperatures decreased by about a half a degree Celsius. And that leads to conclusions like this, depending on the date of the paper, the most recent paper indicates that there will be up to a three degree global average temperature rise within a few days after civilization's failure. So we can't just turn off the heat engine at this point, right? There's no way out. In addition, turning off the heat engine, if we could do it you know, tomorrow, would produce the kinds of fires this planet has never witnessed in the form of 1,200 spent fuel ponds filled with spent fuel rods at nuclear power stations being exposed to the air because the water will evaporate if cool water is not constantly added. So those fuel rods will evaporate off all the water and then will explode and create the kinds of fires this planet has never witnessed and there are 1,200 of them. So think Fukushima times a whole bunch and more catastrophic impacts than Fukushima because this didn't happen at Fukushima. The spent fuel rods were not exposed to the air. They did not explode. Already Civilization in the form of growing grains teeters on the brink. Darge Mail does an excellent write-up every week. He's going to once a month soon, and it will be his climate dispatch, writing a truth out. And just about a month ago, he pointed out in the title, in the headline, that agriculture is on the brink. Because at only one and a half degree global average temperature rise, that threatens the ability to grow grains. Why is that? Because almost all the grains are grown in the interior of large continents, primarily in the northern hemisphere. The interior of large continents warms up at least twice as fast as the global average because they're not influenced by marine systems, by that nice modulated air mass that is the ocean. So already civilization teeters on the brink at one and a half degrees Celsius above baseline and getting hotter. Even the slow rise, notice when this paper was published, that means it was written in 2012 or earlier. It takes about 18 months to get a refereed journal article published. So this paper was published and based on research 2012 or earlier. What that means is there was a, about a 0.85 global average temperature rise above baseline at the time the paper was written. Even at that point, the rise in global average temperature was stripping the ability of organisms to keep up by a factor of 10,000 times. And the organisms under study in this, in this particular case? Vertebrates. Oh, that's us. So we can't keep up. There's no way to adapt. We can't move fast enough. Even if, if we didn't need all those other organisms we depend upon for food and other free services they provide, like cleaning our water and cleaning our air, converting our carbon dioxide into oxygen and so on. We still can't keep up. I haven't talked about the 10-year lag between carbon dioxide emissions and maximum heating associated with those carbon dioxide emissions. So uh, again, we haven't seen the worst of it in terms of carbon dioxide emissions. 
And finally, from just yesterday, climate tipping point could be here. Yeah, really, you think could? I've identified 65 self-reinforcing feedback loops with respect to climate change, including the class rate gun and moistening in the upper troposphere that are very fast feedbacks, either one of which alone has great potential to cause our, our extinction in the very near term. Signs indicate we've reached the threshold scientists fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a done deal. And the critical lines here are abrupt and irreversible. We're in the midst, midst of abrupt climate change, and it is irreversible at temporal spans that, are matter, that matter to humans. At some point, the planet might have cooled down as it has over the course of the last two billion years periodically. But we won't be around to see it. The oceans are becoming anoxic and could be completely depleted in, in oxygen at levels that matter to the organisms that live there as early as 2030. As early as 2030. 